My name is Kay Van Davani. I'm the host of the Davani Connection Show. Well, buying and selling Bitcoin. Uh, primarily, I mean, let's just focus on buying Bitcoin. It's easy, of course. It's convenient to buy on an exchange, right? But um, I guess most of you who are listening or watching right now um, might be thinking, yeah, uh, of course, it's easy to use. It's, you know, but everybody who has gone on an exchange, uh, you know, it, just a you know regular Bitcoin exchange would it be? And I don't want to you know name names or you know not you know I don't want to promote or, or put down any any kind of exchange. But there are you know one or two exchanges who might I might even say where I would say you know um, you know they take things seriously. You know at least from a security perspective, or they are more credible. They are more reliable, um, you know, maybe less fallout, uh, whatever. But that's not the issue. Um, let me just, as I'm uh, live streaming here, just put the um, put the live stream of my YouTube channel on X or Twitter, so that some of the folks might be, you know watching this might want to watch this via youtube all right there you go okay so um again buying an exchange seems to be a pretty easy thing right i mean the thing is and as all of you know who have you know registered and signed up or whatever registered and uh, an account on an you know on a would it be Kraken or Relay or uh, you know Swan or whatever? I mean, uh, all of these exchanges. I mean, either you know m maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. They do KYC procedure, right? Know your customer, right? So you have to strip naked and give all your. I mean, pretty much everything about your life, right? I mean, your your identity, right? I mean. So you you know upload and you submit all kinds of documents, Jesus Christ, from you know uh, identity card or passport or uh, what else, um, a utility bill, and then you have you know you take about you know and then of course utility bill, your address, right, your home address, Jesus Christ, right, uh, and then you need on on top of that some of the exchange you know they they want you to whether it's in Austria or whatever, you know, they need to, you know, put up a sign and then, you know, with the date and your name and then with your, you know, passport, it's like, I mean, just, just from a, from a user uh, or a customer perspective, it's just, it's a nightmare. But anyway, what you have to do is to, you know, strip naked and give all the details, right? So, if, so they've got your name, they've got your address, home address, they've got your picture, they've got your, you know, the copies of your whatever, um, personal identity card or whatever you call identification card, uh, passport, and what have you, utility bill, everything. So now, uh, right, so now you go on an exchange, you know, and I would say, yeah, it's it's relatively easy. I mean, you, you know, you take an offer, um, whatever the spot price or current price, market price, and you know you go through the deal and you know click 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 and you sell it or whatever you buy you buy some bitcoin you know you transfer from your you know if you are in if you're in european union you know you make a sepa transfer to uh let's say you know usually like kraken they have a um we call it like a bank subsidiary right in 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 germany in european union so you transfer your money over there, right? It's pretty easy. It's within one, two, three days maximum. You know, it, it arrives over there. And then you just do your deal, right? You just do your transaction. You, you do your trade. You take an offer, you know, you, um, right? But um, what's the title of the show? KYC or non-KYC Bitcoin? I mean, and and um, now pe most people, um, you know, they go on exchange, right? And that's, uh, you know, they get all kinds of perks and discounts and this and that and promotion and and you know, people are easily influenced on on whatever social media advertising, and so they go and sign up. But what most people, especially noobs or Bitcoin beginners, starters, whatever you call them, don't know or cannot know because they don't have the time, you know, to do some research or do some, you know, 
uh, you know, ask around or whatever. Are there other alternatives? Are there other options to buy Bitcoin, right? Now, the thing is, um, now before I go into all the detail, all the, you know, optionalities and, and alternative methods, how you could, uh, you know, uh, how you could buy Bitcoin um, without KYC, without, you know, strip you know, being stripped naked and, uh, and uh, you know, submitting and uploading all kinds of information, which then, you know, uh, it's a, eventually, uh, uh, with a high probability or not, uh, if these data, you know, are, if your data of all the data, as you've probably heard of, not necessarily exchanges, but other institutions or, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, organizational companies like, ledger or you know other i think even binance or you know or other exchanges so data have you know have been leaked right or hacked stolen right so now you've got like two fronts that you can you have to worry about right you've got um more or less but both of them if you think about it are criminals right one of them does it legally, you know, with laws and regulation, blah, 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 right? <laughs> and they justify with court, with judiciary and, and, and laws and regulation and constitution, blah, 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 right? That's the state, right? The government, the country you live in, right? The state, the government, right? They, they, they steal from you systematically. Would it be directly, indirectly? Would it be taxation or inflation, systemic inflation, right? Or systemic or progressive, whatever, taxation, whatever you do, right? But essentially, you know, they steal from you. Inflation, hyperinflation, you know, uh, that's why it's called a hidden tax or, uh, uh, yeah. So, and and the other criminal is, you know, the criminal by, by nature, you know, who just wants to, you know, steal, right? Or rob. Um, now, whether by deceit or um fraud or scam or you know armed robbery or you know they rob you know they come in you know one person two person i don't know two or three criminal they come in uh, to your home or you know they got your address right and uh they got everything they got they they pretty much you know they can research you you know uh, especially if they've got your name your address your passport your, your, your everything your, you know and they if you are you know pretty pretty much public or whatever or do kind all kinds of stuff they 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 can find a lot of information right background information whether you're on vacation or not whether you have children or not are you married or not how much money you could have how much assets you could have right. And that's why, you know, you might have heard about the $5 wrench attack. I mean, it's not to be joking. And I've heard directly from people who said that uh, either directly or, or people who I know who know other people who uh, who said, you know, that they know people that um, had to move, you know, because uh, their whole life was exposed. Their data was exposed, hacked, stolen, leaked, whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's essentially... The, uh, you know, it was, ex you know, their, their whole, um, you know, the identities, their, their privacy, everything, everything was exposed. So there are some people that actually, you know, had to move, were forced to move from one place to another uh, by trying even, you know, not to leave any traces or whatever. But this is what happens, right? Especially when you have a company who doesn't take security seriously. Now, I got to say, I mean, until now, uh, I haven't heard like uh, anything, you know, uh, for example, just for example, because I know from firsthand like Kraken, right? I mean, I've never heard about Kraken, who's, you know, uh, they have got their, I think their main domicile, whatever residency or, or uh, jurisdiction in United States, but they've got, you know, but you can do it internationally, right? But you got to upload all your, again, strip naked and, uh, submit and upload all all kinds of information, passport, utility bill, address, anything, everything. But um, and I've heard from other uh, security experts, cybersecurity experts, that Kraken takes things pretty seriously. As, I mean, you know, security, uh, everything around security. So I've never heard anything negative about about Kraken. Now I don't know anything about other you know uh, Bitcoin exchanges, uh, right? 
let's just you know stick to the Bitcoin, you know, ethos, Bitcoin ethical uh, exchanges who only you know whatever uh, you know um, sell or buy uh, you know sell Bitcoin or, or trade Bitcoin, you know, and and or uh, you can you know set up an account and do all kinds of uh, you know. Um, what do you call it? Like uh, all at once or um, small amounts, right? Uh, DCA, the, the dollar cost, everything, whatever, right? So with it, you know, some kind of exchange in Europe, European Union or America or I don't know, or Canada. But the problem always stays the same. You have to submit all kinds of information. Now, the thing is, as you observe, as you understand, as you you know gain more knowledge and understanding what's going on, you know, uh, around you, around all of us, uh, politically, geopolitically, economically, uh, criminally, structurally within, uh, you know, na na nations, supranational organizations, you know, would it be European Union or I don't know, or all these kinds of puppets, you know, the leaders or all these unelected, un you know, uh, wannabe dictators such, such as Van der Leyen or whatever, you know, or uh, the ECB president. I mean, all their wet dream is to, like, you know, introduce a CBDC, central bank digital currency, couple it and connect it with a super centralized digital identity. And there you go. So, you know, did you, you know, eat too much steak or did you say anything negative on social media? Whoops. And, you know, your account is blocked, you know, whatever. Uh, or they just confiscate your money or they just, you know, no, they just do it electronically, centrally, you know, of course, digitally. But that's that's the point. You know, that's the whole essence between Bitcoin and uh, everything else. Right. Would it be fiat uh, money or uh, and fiat money is is primarily digitally, of course, but it's centralized, right? And Bitcoin is the one and only decentralized information, money, uh, protocol, or whatever, right? It's it has all the properties that uh, humanity could have ever dreamt about. Uh, it's decentralized, censorship resistant, unconfiscatable, absolutely limited, with absolute scarcity of twenty one million Bitcoin. Each Bitcoin, again, equals 100 million Satoshis. You don't need a whole Bitcoin again. So you, all you need to do is to buy a little bit, you know, uh, but which I'm going to talk about soon. But uh, all you need to do is in regular intervals or on a regular basis, buy a small fraction of a 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 Bitcoin. Would it be 10 euros or dollars or, you know, a lump sum of whatever, I don't know, 500, 100 euros, whatever, 1,000 euros, 1,000 euros. I don't, you know, especially when the price dumps. This is what people, you know, are like panicking, you know, when, when this, there is volatility and uh, the price, you know, dumps. Like, uh, I mean, people haven't gone through, uh, most people haven't gone through all those cycles. And I haven't even, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got a Bitcoin only podcast since 2007. It took me, I think it st I started, you know, like doing all these shit coins, like all these, like uh, lots of other people, even OGs, you know, who have been in space, you know, have even gone into shit coinery and, you know, do, you know, did all the experience. And then you find yourself, you find your soul, you find your heart, you find your, you know, you, you understand, you begin to understand and comprehend the essence, the structure of Bitcoin, the architecture of Bitcoin, and, you know, what's the difference and the ethos, especially the ethos and the, and the super potential, the super potential of Bitcoin. What, not only as an individual, but as human species, human civilization, as a planetary civilization, we are able to achieve within within a shortest time period. I mean, we could have that, we could offer all these kinds of technologies, but I'm digressing. Okay, I'm digressing. I'm digressing from one rabbit hole to another. Uh, the question, the, 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 the question here is... Um, what what's the what's the disadvantage? What are the dangers? What are the risks when you're buying KYC Bitcoin, right? So you go on exchanges and they've got all kinds of, of course, yeah, they're they're forced to do you know abide by the laws, regulations, and then you've got all these kind of other you know AML anti anti money laundering you know whatever directives, whatever you call regulations, usually and mostly uh, you know uh, uh, put upon them you know, sort of forced upon them by some kind of weird, you know, cryptic, abstract, I mean, unelected entities uh, who 
to be honest with you and transparent for the sake of transparency, they do all their money laundering in the in the amount of trillions, if you believe it or not. And you don't have to believe me, just research it for yourself. How much money laundering has been going on and is going on per, uh, you know, per anno, per year? We're talking about trillions, right? If you t- if you take the central banks, I mean, who are, I mean, I don't want to even go to the rabbit hole. Who controls? Who really owns controls? The fiat monetary, central banking, banking, you know, financial, military, industrial, blah 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 complex, right? But uh, I mean, how many trillions of U.S. dollars or whatever, or uh, um, or euro dollars, or, or you know? Uh, which had, you know, have been like created since the fifties or sixties, something like that. Uh, it's sort of a proxy for for U.S. dollars, but anyway, or or whatever fiat fiat currencies. I mean, they have been money laundering and and with all kinds of um, insane criminal uh, activities systematically in the trillions through you know central banks, commercial banks, you know all the you know, and then you've got the whole financial. Offshore, of course, you know, corporate, uh, whole, you know, cons- you know, uh, you know, very weird structural complexities of, you know, of you can do a lot of things, you know, especially if you've got, you know, lawyers and experts who who do they do thing they do things these kind of things for for living, right? So they know how to hide, how to you know obfuscate, how to you know launder money, and we're talking about like all kinds of criminal activities from systemic, you know, child trafficking or, you know, pedophile global network of, uh, uh, they call themselves elite, but, you know, I'm calling them parasites. Would it be the royals, the the corporate CEOs, politicians? That's why, you know, most uh, people in within the uh, political structures are not only puppets, but they are blackmailed or blackmailable, right? Extorted and blackmailed because a lot of them, not all of them, but you know, they all got all kinds of shit, you know, going on in the, uh, in the basement, right? And um, they've done all kinds of, you know, evil, satanic shit, and that's why they're blackmailed. But the other question, philosophical question, you know, do they know when they get into these kind of positions or do they get, you know, do they, are they green being groomed? Some of them are, you know, like Obama. I mean, you know, these kind of people have been and were groomed like decades and decades ago, right? But a lot of those, you know, uh, you know, prostitutes, uh, politicians, you know, whatever, man, woman, or whatever, they go inside this thing and they know exactly what, either they know exactly what they're up to, or, you know, they're, if, if essentially they get, um, they get to get, you know, make a choice, right? So, and uh, as you can see or uh, assume or, you know, uh, uh, deduct from these, you um, from your, you know, from your very or individual observations, I mean, you you just know that they are blackmailed or um, or at least corrupted. First of all, of course, corrupt. You know, it's corruption is the essence of every politician. That's why you can't trust maybe zero point one percent, right? If you, if you've got like like you know whatever, uh, I don't know whoever, you know, I'm gonna say like Ron Paul or whatever, but essentially like ninety nine percent or ninety five percent, they are all they are all fucking corrupt criminal blackmailed, extorted, whatever, right? Uh, pressure, intimidated, threatened, whatsoever, right? So um, let's go back to KYC, non-KYC. So um, so the thing is, uh, I think it would be much, much, the, the process of, uh, or, or let's just say the hyper-Bitcoinization process, if you really want to achieve this within, you know, shortest time period, and we want to accelerate this. Then I think the only way to do this, and this is why I focus on the circle economies, you know, uh, uh, educating the not only the literally like the masses, but going like to specific groups like merchants, uh, small business owners, entrepreneurs, right, and tell them, you know what, because now we can talk to them because you know inflation or uh, the 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 loss of purchasing power, I mean, it's become and and the you know and the exponential rise in prices of, for lots of products and services or specific product services have gone into the, through the roof. So people, you can already talk to them. I you can notice that. I notice that, right? Whether it's a hair cutter or someone who just changes a tire or has a small business, a small shop, <laughs> what have you. So if we can get these people, like give them 
a choice, like an option, like, hey, you know what? What do you have to lose? Like, give your customers, your clients, another, just another option. Just let them, give them the option, give them the choice. Do they want to, you know, pay in Bitcoin or pay in fiat? Now, the whole, you know, accounting and how you can convert it and so you can, you know, do this everything, you know, right on uh on a, on a regulated basis and legally and everything and for your for your tax advisors and that's that's a totally different issue but it's all you know this is this is you know <laughs> piece of cake right so all you need to do is like you know give give them an option say like, you know what give your clients customers an option to pay in bitcoin right and all that you need in the beginning, at least, it's just a mobile, you know, uh, people, you know, they can just download a, a mobile wallet. Now, what the merchant has to do is, you know, for the long term, maybe, you know, implement or uh, integrate a BTC pay server, and then you can just install it. And someone, you know, like me and other people who am I cooperating with on Bitcoin21.at, especially for German speaking uh, merchants, we want to offer this service and this, uh, you know, education and this tutoring and this mentoring. Yeah, it's called a Bitcoin mentoring. So this is what we want to do, right? And this is how we can achieve hybrid Bitcoinization by non-KYC Bitcoin. I mean, you know, when people want to come into the shop and buy an ice cream for the kids, you know, so they can pay in sats, right? The right, the subunits of, of Bitcoin, right? Each Bitcoin, again, is 100 million Satoshi. So you don't need a whole Bitcoin again, right? So people have, you know, and now I'm not going to even discuss custodial versus uh, self-custodial, wallets but of course i'm i'm always you know of the opinion just you know give them straight the recommendation download a self custodial bitcoin wallet right bitcoin only wallet not a shitcoin wallet right but but a, a bitcoin wallet which has uh uh preferably not only uh you can, can do automatically everything you know on chain and lightning and might even do whatever like aqua you know has everything under one roof they've got you know lightning uh, LBDC, you know, USDT, and they, they do all the swaps. Everything's automated. Everything on the roof, and it's all obfuscated. The whole process, technical, technical is all. Uh, Phoenix Wallet, you can, you know, for example, Phoenix Wallet, you can connect it to your own node. Or um, I don't know if you don't, if you want to do only like on-chain transaction, okay, sure. But it's, uh, you know, the transaction fees and the minor fees, of course, can be high, right? Or are usually lately, recently, pretty high. Yeah, so that's why you do Lightning. So you offer your, you give your clients, customers the option, the beautiful option. Hey, you know what? Uh, if you want, you can pay pay me in Bitcoin, right? And all you need, right, is a QR code. You just scan it, and that's it. And voila! And the payment has been processed. The transaction is finalized, and that's it. And now it's up to the merchant. You know uh, how much of that transaction, you know, as it accumulates, of course. All these transactions, all these, uh, uh, you know, accumulated Bitcoin, how much do I want to uh, keep this as a reserve asset or, you know, as a treasury, whatever we call it, as a saving, right? And let's say 30%, like, and, and 70% is just all operational, right? For operational, whatever expenses, or it gets automatically converted to fiat. So this is all possible, right? So then people, ordinary people, who have never even might have who have never even might have heard about Bitcoin have never got in touch in Bitcoin for the first time they you know they might get back some sats you know as a, as a change or something or they can you know start selling some of their shit you know or some kind of I don't know secondhand things or they can do, do can do it for their own shop for their own business start offering and this is how we can you know accelerate the process of hybrid organization through circular economies through regional local circular economies economies rooted in bitcoin and this is how we can you know just uh, tell the exchanges you know what just fuck off just fuck off right we don't need you anymore we don't, I don't want to strip, you know, be stripped naked, give all your my information and then be, you know, go into the, you know, total risk of exposing myself, my family, my, my assets, my wealth, you know, to not only the state and the government, the criminal, you know, parasitic, exploitative, you know, uh, satanic, whatever entities of, I mean, just, it's just, let's stick to the facts. I mean, taxation, right? I mean, what is it? Where does it come from? Right? I mean, how is it being justified? And then on top of it, you've got inflation. 
like exponential inflation and the consumer price index is a fraud. It's a fucking scam. We're being defrauded, lied to, cheated on. So there's a lot of, you know, wonderful authors who have written about this and, and articles. Uh, you can, you know, check it out on social media, the articles, Bitcoiners, economists. It's a fucking fraud. The CPI index is a fucking fraud. So the, the monetary debasement, the loss of purchasing power, whatever you call it, is much, much higher, especially for specific or many products and services, right? You can feel it. You can see. That's why you can start talking now to people. And then, on the other hand, you've got the criminals, whatever you call them, violent or nonviolent. They're going to try to, right? They're going to try to, once they, you know, once their data is leaked, stolen, hacked, right? It happened to a lot of entities, organizations, companies. And we're not talking about like a couple of addresses or whatever or names, no or identities. We're talking about like hundreds of thousands, maybe millions, right? Just exposed, right? So they got your address, they got your photo, they got your background, they can research you, they know your, they got everything. They got everything about you. And now you can just, you know, sit here and pray. I'm not, I'm not, now the thing I'm I'm not saying is that, I'm not saying that these exchanges, especially the, all these, I mean, the, 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 whether it's in Austria or Switzerland or United States or Canada, I'm not saying, you know, these people are like, you know, idiots, incompetent, whatever, but shit happens. You just need even whether it's one person, one employee, you know, who is not trustworthy, who is incompetent, who is a, who is a scammer, who is a fraud, who is a criminal, you know, who, who exposes all these things, or maybe just, you know, a technical glitch, whatever it is. And then you're fucking lost. You, you're fucking exposed to, to these criminals and to the state, to the criminal state, the government, and, and everything else. And then you, what are you going to do? You're just going to sit here and pray, right? No, that's why a lot of people had to move. They had to move from one location and they had to move everything. They have to try, you know, to obfuscate and and you know get rid of all the of all the traces, right? And once the thing is, once you buy on an exchange, that's it. It's like you know, set in stone, right? <laughs> They've got you, you know, it's it's gonna haunt you. And and then on top of that, you know, with all the, you know, the the push for more centralization, more surveillance, mass surveillance. More monetary, more you know, uh, uh, whatever. I mean, censorship and everything else, right? And CBDC, the push for global, you know, on every level, you know, CBDC, central bank digital currencies. And I know, yeah, I mean, there are movements, of course, against. And I'm hopeful. I'm hoping, you know, that this whole, um, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know what to talk, what to what to think about this whole election and voting. You know, I mean, I've I've, I've really literally stop voting for, for because it's you know i mean it's not like you really have a choice right i mean you've got like you know on on the platter on a plate you know you've got all these um parties or uh, whether it be right conservative left or centered or whatever or, yeah i'm hoping that something's going to change something you know is going to transform going to going to change but eventually but essentially what i'm talking about is the laws and the regulations and the supernatural th shit is going on and the criminality and the dictatorship with communism soviet style you know i mean this is what they're pushing for central bank central bank digital currencies and then tied to your digital you know super centralized identity and then you can't say shit and then whatever you, you buy too much steak you eat too much steak uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna block you or you go, they're gonna tell you you know what you have about one or two weeks deadline and then you until that time you can only buy at these stores you know these kind of products and services you can't buy any more steak that's it you've you've Oh, you've created too much CO2. For God's for Christ's sake, CO2 is life. I mean, this is the one of the, if not the biggest fucking, you know, biggest scientific fraud perpetrated on human on humanity. CO2 for, for Christ's sake. 0.04% of, of the atmosphere. And, and what? Humanity is is causing how much of that of that 0.04%? It's like, I don't know, something like it's like one percent or something like that or, or even less or i don't know it, it's so fucking it's co2 for christ's sake it's life 
It's not human made. It's weather. It's climate. It's the sun. It's the geomagnetic excursion. It's the soul activities. It's, I mean, we, we got serious problems in the decades and years to come. Solar flares, the exponential reduction of the magnetic field of the, of the planet Earth. We have, you know, micronova in the next decades to come, pole, pole shift, especially the magnetic shift, you know, shield, the magnetic, uh, you know, field of the earth exponentially decreasing at least 5% per year, maybe even more. Anyway, back to KYC versus non-KYC Bitcoin. So, so what, what kind of options do you have to buy non-KYC Bitcoin? You can go to Bitcoin ATM. I mean, I know until recently, at least, I'm not sure the, the super current st status right now, but you were able definitely in Austrian Bitcoin ATMs to buy up to 250 euros, you know, subsequently, you know, one after another, but uh, up to 250 euros of, of Bitcoin to exchange, whatever, buy, sell, exchange Bitcoin without any kind of, you know, not even a mobile, whatever, SMS or giving you mobile num number or any kind of identity or up, nothing up to 250. I mean, that's like, you know, 250 euros, right? But what you had to, you know, sort of accept as a trade-off is, um, is a little bit of higher transaction fees or whatever. It was sort of a little bit more expensive than if you would have, bought it let's just say classically on a on a bitcoin exchange right where you again have to you know strip naked and uh you know submit all your information right identity name photo address everything else right but hey i mean that's a pretty good trade-off i think or you could do it via bisc bisc network the you know, a super, you know, a hodl hodl. I mean, I mean, I don't have much experience with hodl hodl, but I would prefer BISC, B I S Q, and it's peer to peer. It's a peer to peer transaction, right? So you take an offer on BISC, or you make an offer whether you want to buy or sell, and and then you, you know, if you're in European Union, you just you know make a, you know, without any kind of in additional for me, you just. You just, um, you know, you just transfer that money and then uh, automatically on BISC, there's a sort of automatic, like an escrow, like a sort of an escrow account, you know, where uh, uh, it's sort of a deposit, right? It's locked up for, for both trading partners, right? Buyer, seller. And once, you know, the trade is finalized and, you know, uh, let's say the, sell, uh, the seller of Bitcoin gets his whatever euro or money on his account and I confirm that and then... The escrow is released, and each one of them, a buy and seller, that both trading partners get their uh, whatever you know the deposit back, right? Whatever percentage that is, that is you know either individually said or or it's a standard or whatever. But it works perfect. It works smoothly, and it's you know it's peer to peer for Christ's sake, right? It's private. It's a private transaction. That's it. Um, or you can do it, you know, from person to person. I mean, there are a lot of other uh, uh, possibilities, avenues, options that uh, that you you know you can just research. But peer, the, I think the key is peer to peer, and without going on any kind of centralized custodial, whatever we call it, uh, KYC AML regulated entities, organizations, or you know, exchanges. Whatever that is, whatever that is, whether it's Binance or Croc and Swan, Relay, Confinity, or what have you. Just stay away from these fucking, you know, uh, entities, organizations. I'm not talking about the people. The people are wonderful. They're, you know, nice people, sympathetic people. You can talk to them. You can, all kinds of things. But I don't know whether they they uh, they really comprehend what the consequences are or could be, right? What the effects are or could be, right? They got your data, man. They got your data, and you and they they are they are obligated. They are obligated to comply, and it's called compliance. That's why it's called compliance. They have to they have to comply with the existing and um, uh, laws and regulations or whatever of that you know specific uh, you know country, uh, nation, government, um, or supranationally within the Euro European Union, right? Which is then, you know, of course, uh, adapted to national law uh, or regulations, and then you've got on top of that the anti-money laundering, especially when there is, you know, amounts involved that are, you know, goes above a, a, a certain threshold, right? So they have to comply. So it's not really their. I mean, you could say, yeah, it's not their fault, but they have to comply, right? 
But I'm, I'm saying you have a choice. What I'm saying is that you have a choice. You can make your own decision. You can make your own judgment. You can make your own, you know, uh, uh, weighing off of trade-offs and, and thinking it through. Like, do you really want to be exposed? Um, so this is why, even if you have done it now until so far, but I would, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm urging you, I'm, I'm, I'm really suggesting to you urgently, um, get rid of all the, you know, all these exchanges, get, get rid of an account. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there are some people who say, you know, you could somehow reverse that trans, you know, transaction, you know, put it sort of reverse, uh, engineer this whole thing and but i don't know maybe it's too complicated maybe it's um maybe it doesn't really uh essentially the the exchange as you know at the end of the day ha, ha, you know ha, ha, has all your information right and what happens to that information what happens to that data is it going to be leaked hacked stolen you know transferred somewhere or maybe you know some kind of security breach you don't know. You just don't know, right? This is what I'm saying, right? Um, the key, I think we need a, a structural approach, a, a structural solution uh, to, to this problem. And I think this lies in the in the wonderful, you know, um, possibility of uh, boosting and promoting and supporting circular economies of scale, <laughs> right? I mean, you start locally, right? You start in your little village, town, city, whatever, in your state, and then you expand it. You expand and expand and expand. But circular, the key is circular regional economies. It can be a farmer's market, right? Every weekend you go there, he has got a like a, whatever, his mobile wallet, whatever, some kind of system. It doesn't matter. It can be a mobile wallet, right? You just, you know, scan the QR code, you pay him in sats, and the deal is done like instantaneously especially when you especially you have to do it with lightning otherwise you're gonna you know wait for confirmation right and you could wait up to i don't know could take a few minutes could take up to average right 10 minutes but you're paying sats right with lightning with the most you know with the best uh hardware wallet. And i'm not gonna recommend wall of satoshi but if that is like the first steps you want baby steps you want to take you know, go ahead, but it's a custodial wallet, right? Nothing's going to happen. I mean, it's we're talking about like small amounts. You want to buy your raw milk, your ice cream, your whatever, right? Your chocolate. So um, you just, you know, you. Uh, I would recommend, you know, uh, would it be uh, any kind of self-custodial Bitcoin wallet which has integrated everything under one roof? That would be the best thing, right? Phoenix wallet, uh P H O E and yeah X or uh, um, or Aqua Wallet, you know, whatever I want to think about their team or organization or whatever, uh, or the attitude or behavior or ethos, or it doesn't matter, right? But but it works, right? And it's self custodial, it's self custodial, um, and it it works, and uh, it got you know on chain Lightning Liquid. Uh, Bitcoin, right? It's sort of a side chain of Bitcoin, but it's all, it's all like all the technicalities, everything is like obfuscated in the background. So you don't need to do anything. You just, you just do a transaction, whether it be on chain or lightning. What else? Uh, which other? I mean, there's Mutiny Wallet. There is, uh, yeah. All, I mean, any kind of uh, uh, blocks and green wallet is, is an only, is an only a um, uh, uh, on-chain wallet, right? But it works perfectly. I mean, if, yeah, if you've got time, you know, the merchant and you as a customer, if you've got time and you're, you know, chit-chatting and you want to wait for confirmation and pay, of course, on top of that, higher transaction, minor fees, then go ahead, right? And uh, yeah, uh, so these are, you know, any kind of self-custodial wallet would do it. But this is how we, you know, accelerate not only the circular economy boosts the circular economies, but we accelerate by orders of magnitude the hyper-Bitcoinization and we get rid of all these fucking exchanges. The KYC, you know, uh, AML regulated, you know, and uh, uh, exchanges and companies. And then you're not exposed, you know, to the state, to the government, to the tax author authorities who just want to, you know, uh, skim you and rob you and 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 ex exploit you and steal from you on a legal basis or you got your criminals or you got the criminals who're going to come whatever with weapons with knives with uh, a wrench 
with a five dollar wrench. That's why it's called right five dollar wrench attack, right? And endanger you, right? Put you and your family in danger, or even you know assault you, hurt you, and rob you. And this is what you're up what up against. I mean, what do you want? What do you want to arm yourself? I mean, yeah, in some states, countries, you know, it's legal to you know defend yourself with whatever guns or uh, or whatever, right? I mean, you've you've got to protect, right? Well, how do you, how, how else are you going to protect yourself uh, and your family, your children, right? So this is why. You want to prevent all this shit, right? Just don't go to KYC exchanges. Don't trade. You know, don't do any kind of exchanges on KYC uh, exchanges. Don't buy any KYC Bitcoin because they got all your information. Do it peer to peer. Do it on BISC. Do it if you can. If it's still allowed, especially to a, to a specific threshold amount of Bitcoin, go to a Bitcoin ATM. Whatever country, I, I know it was it was definitely possible in Austria and un, at least until recently. I'm not too sure about the current status, but I think it's uh, it's not uh, possible anymore. Now you have to I don't know, at least uh, you know give up uh, some kind of uh, I don't know identity or mobile phone number. I I don't know whatever, but it can be a KYC light sort of procedure. But it doesn't matter. But you have to you know it doesn't really doesn't matter. It, it, at the end of the day, you're exposed, right? Or do it peer to peer. I'm sure you know if people get together and they they can form without you know putting yourself at risk. You know some kind of some kind of witness <laughs> protection program or I don't know some some kind of you know where usually there's a notary and there's some I mean sort of a regulated uh, over you know with an oversight. Maybe there's some kind of you know groups that can come together and do at least small amounts of transaction. You know you know what I'm doing it in life. You know. I'm giving this money. You tra you're, you're transferring me this money in Bitcoin. I'm giving the euro. Maybe that would be the best approach if you're doing like on a face-to-face -face level, right? So, essentially, uh, you know, the goddess of uh, of Bitcoin says non-KYC Bitcoin is the winner, is the definite winner, and the only, I mean, rational, uh, logical, ethical, and safe uh, solution. To how you can get your hands on Bitcoin, whether you you know you want to do it with small amounts, uh, so called auto DCA dollar cost. I don't even know why it's called DCA dollar cost averaging or euro cost averaging, whatever. But like you know, accumulating small amounts or buying lump sum. But you know, there's other avenues, other options: hodl hodl, BISC, decentralized exchanges, peer to peer Bitcoin ATMs, and what have you. So, please follow me. Uh, by the way, I've started uh, um, uh, synchronizing uh, more or less relatively one-to-one -one or uh, pretty much exactly uh, the, the tutorials, video tutorials of BTC sessions into German because I think there's a lack of knowledge of resources for German speaking so they can focus you know, on the technicalities of the tutorial and they can listen to my voice now I'm trying to find a open source, you know, for free because it's super expensive to do an AI synchronization, which would actually work really good. I, I tested already with even the, you know, the system, even you know, the 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 tool would even simulate the the, the voice of of BTC sessions himself, or it's sort of a similar voice, but it would do it sort of a really with 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 hardly any mistakes. So for now, even with my chronic, uh, you know, coughing, I'm sorry about that, but sometimes I do have this chronic coughing. I'm trying to do my best, you know, I'm doing this for free. So if you want to support my work, please, uh, yeah, follow me, subscribe my channel, uh, follow me on Twitter, X, LinkedIn, Facebook, Telegram, Instagram, uh, Nostr, you know, wherever you are, Primal or whatever, Iris. Uh, uh, and yeah. Uh, support my work, share my videos, share my tutorials, share my interviews, whom I, you know, it's not only like, I mean, it's, it's like super focused on Bitcoin, but it's very holistic. Uh, so would it be geopolitics, technology, suppressed technologies, investigative journalism, experts, insider, whistleblowers. So if you can, please support me, share my videos, subscribe, follow me uh, in any shape or form. I really, really appreciate, appreciate your support, your, um, uh, your, you know, promoting my work, what have you. 
But anyway, I'm so I've done starting, you know, synchronizing these uh, some of the uh, Bitcoin uh, BTC sessions tutorials into German. And yeah, I'm gonna you know talk more about um, maybe even have some guest experts on Bitcoiners, prominent Bitcoiners on you know uh, KYC Bitcoin versus uh, non KYC Bitcoin. What are the dangers, the risks, the benefits, the disadvantages, the advantages, the trade offs? Uh, what are the properties of each one of them? I mean, what, what kind of you know madness are you, would you go into if you if you you know if you continue buying or or you know if you start buying uh, on a centralized uh exchange you know kyc aml regulated and yeah so uh, i think we have to push this we need solutions again circle economies local regional circle economies rooted in bitcoin starting with your you know hair cutter you know coiffeur you know your your tire changer or your mechanic your old shop you know uh, especially like small shops, you know, let's, let's, let's boost them. They understand now they understand the, the, the root cause, the root problems, the root the solution can be only Bitcoin. It's like, what do you, what do you, what do you have to lose? Right. Give it, give, give you, give your clients, give your customers the option to, you know, to, to, to pay in Bitcoin. And all you need is a QR code and a mobile wallet. Again, Phoenix, whatever, Aqua, Mutiny any kind of self-custodial Bitcoin wallet where you can, you know, write your 12, 24 words, laminate it, you know, keep it safe. Don't, you know, don't say it loud. Be careful, not any cameras around. So this is the expertise, the advice we want to give on Bitcoin21.at, uh, especially uh, and, and primarily for uh, focused on German speaking, you know, individuals, um, clients, you know, businesses, shops, um, merchants, but, uh, starting now in, in, in Austria, would it be in Styria or any other, you know, uh, county or state of, of Austria, and then, you know, expand to Germany and Switzerland. But this is what we want to do. What I want to do with other German speaking, uh, Bitcoiners, uh, Bitcoin maximalists, Bitcoin educators, uh, Bitcoin, uh, yeah, OG, OGs or, you know, te technical people, uh, would it be, you know, multi-signature, increasing your privacy, uh, inheritance, uh, you know, how do you do that? Um, how do you create redundancy? How do you increase your safety? How, you know, and it's about like a fundamental shift, right? From delegating responsibility to taking responsibility. And this is what Bitcoin is about. It's about self-responsibility, self-custody, and uh, you need to take care of your own assets, of your own wealth, of your own uh, uh, Bitcoin, right? Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. So thank you again for watching, for listening. Please share this video, share, the, share uh, uh, follow me on Twitter, X, LinkedIn, Facebook, Telegram, uh, Noster. You can write me uh, via email address, info at, uh, at Bitcoin21.at. Uh, you can check out this. It's still in, in construction, sort of, but the, the, the essential information is already there. Bitcoin21.at uh, for Austria. And um, yeah, my name is Kevin Davani. I'm the host of the Davani Connection Show. And I'll see you soon again. Thank you. Bye.